Hello my soccer universe! Well, if the Champions League was a little bit of a dud, I think the Europa and the Europa Conference League more than made up for it yesterday, although it took a while and yes, there were two games that did not live quite up to expectations, but the other two not only went to overtime, there was a brilliant game in Sevilla uh, where you had everything, great atmosphere, great action, uh, turnaround, it was all there. Whereas the one in Basel that went to overtime, it was more of a question, why is this actually going to overtime and why has not Fiorentina um, scored more goals? In the end, we have two more Italians in the final and we have two other big name teams in the final uh, of big leagues. Of course, Sevilla undeniable as usual. And West Ham make, an, uh, make a European Cup final uh, appearance, I think, I want to say, I mean, the, law, the last one in 1966, the Cup Winners' Cup against 1860 Munich. I'm not sure if they have been in a European Cup final ever since, so it's a big moment for them as well. And I'm thinking, you know, it's exactly, when I look at the conference final between Fiorentina and West Ham, that's exactly the size of um, teams that this competition is made for. I even would have said uh, if an AZ against Basel final would have happened, it would also be, you know, this is exactly why we have the Conference League. It's the, um, you know, second tier of the top leagues and maybe some top teams from some smaller leagues that are made in there. And I think for the Europa League, we have a brilliant final between the eternal winner of that competition and uh, Jose Mourinho has never lost a European Cup final. And I always, call Roma the biggest of the small teams. Roma is by no means a small team, but in terms of trophies won, Roma are a small team, but with the background of a really, really, really huge club and the expectations of a really, really huge club. I would say we'll start in the Conference League, we'll start in Alkmaar, wearing West Ham, they get the 1-0 win. Um, it was one of those games where Alkma maybe had more possession, tried to break West Ham down. West Ham could sit back because they had the lead, uh, were always dangerous on the counter, especially Paqueta hitting the outside of the post. Um, and Alkma really failing to create any meaningful chances, it has to be said. Uh, it was always, there was always a foot in between, it was blocked. There was not this glaring chance where I said, yeah, uh, they should have scored. However, the momentum of the game was mostly with Al Alkma. It was usually the last pass, so there was someone not there to tap, tap in. I think it was just one situation at the beginning of the second half where this half happened. So, uh, in the end, when Fornals uh, scores in stoppage time to make it 1-0 for West Ham, it's kind of the foreground. It was kind of happening. It was just sealed the deal. Uh, it's a nice thing. The uh, final is played in Prague at the Slavia Stadium. And of course, Thomas Suchek from West Ham played for Slavia for a long time. So uh, kind of a little bit of a homecoming for him there as well. The only thing I'm wondering is why West Ham did not have a sponsor on the jerseys. But I think it looked actually quite nice. Um, although, you know, without the other sponsor, I wish maybe that the sleeve cuffs would have also happened around here. As I said, the other uh, game was way more exciting uh, because it, it actually went to overtime. Uh, half an hour, nothing was happening. And then Fiorentina kicked it in, into the next level. A few uh, chances for um, that result in corner kicks and the Biragi corner kicks and headed in. But Nico Gonzalez, at that point, Fiorentina had firm and literally firm control of that game. Um, however, with the only real chance, and credit where credit do, nice TIFO by the Basel fans uh, as well. Basel, who are in serious uh, trouble financially as well, because they, they will have to sell off players. They are not going anywhere. They're not going to Europe next season. They are uh, outside of that in the Swiss League. So this was their one big chance to get back into Europe uh, for next season. So it was a rough night for them. But, you know, they had one thing going for them. They always scored late, like they did already in Florence in the go-ahead game. And then they actually got an equalizer out of almost nowhere. I mean, it was Palma who makes a free kick from almost midfield. And then Andune is just um, getting past Igor, who never should have let him go past that. And it's 1-1, one, one, a teeny bit out of no nowhere. And then it was the show of Fiorentina just messing up chances, especially Luka Jovic missing uh, free headers, should have made equalized much earlier. There was also by Bonaventura a good chance. Uh, 
the ball did go everywhere except in, in the net until it went uh, when the ball falls to Nico Gonzalez again, who gets 2 1 in the 72nd minute. Honestly, at that point, Fiorentina probably should have equalized. Yes, Basel then came and had a few chances, but it was always about Fior Fiorentina. And, uh, over time, I see you. Jovic missed in extra time. <laughs> but I remember his misses. So yeah, jo Jovic came, came on. And I mean, the chances that he missed in, extra, in uh, over, over time were just... It was ridiculous at the point. But similar going for Fiorentina early on. Um, the game had to be then suspended for, for a while because seeming a Fiorentina fan uh, needed medical attention. So that uh, extended the game. And then in, in the end, uh, Basel, who had been defending, 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 uh, were looking like they are, they are going to concede at some point. Maybe they, hang, uh, they go into a penalty, penalty shooter, but no, they forget about Anthony Barak, another Czech player going to Prague, uh, who scores then the winning goal for VR15, and they just had to hang on and make it to the final. A uh, quick look ahead of the uh, to, to, to the final, like I did for the Champions League. Um, Jersey-wise, I would expect Fiorentina to play, of course, in purple. West Ham, uh, a little bit more uh, curious, but I think they will go with the white jerseys with, with the orange. I think this is a very pleasing overall matchup. And as for the chances, it's rather, rather level. Uh, my model has Fiorentina just a smidgen, like 50.27% uh, ahead of West Ham. To be honest, if I think of it from another perspective, without any underlying ratings and so on, um, I would give West Ham the slight advantage uh, because I think they have overall the better players. However, Fiorentina have a playing style that's very offensively. They probably can hurt West Ham, but you know, if West Ham just soak up the pressure and with their quality players hit Fiorentina on a break, like they did now against Alkma, I can see it happening very well this way. Fiorentina definitely need to have their shooting boots on to make it into the final. Let's go to Leverkusen. Roma had their first shot on goal in the second minute and that was their only shot on goal. And then it was only going one way traffic. I think it was 23 to 1 shots for the entire game. I think Amiri hit the crossbar in the 12th minute and then the game was more or less Roma being tight at the back, letting Leverkusen come and Leverkusen not having really chances. It was all long range shots. And I mean, I saw a good chunk, especially of the injury time. And whatever Leverkusen tried, they had possession, everything going there, going there. They just could not break down Roma. And the funny, funny thing is that the Roma were so defensive that even when they cleared the ball, there was no one to pick it up. It was really, it was purest Catanacho that we knew from the 80s with Roma just defending themselves into, into the final. Um, I have to say, I do not condone such a playing style anymore. And even if it's my beloved Roma, yes, Milan fan, but Roma, all I always said, is my second favorite team in Italy. I always want to do, want to have them do well. It was Mourinho in his finest form, but it was also pragmatic to Mourinho, who knew that um, with all the injuries that we have, our only chance is to shut it, shut down shop and maybe hope that some injured players come back. I think if a Dybala, for instance, is playing for Roma, it will be a different story. And here's to hoping that in the two weeks that we have now, two to the final, that some of those players can make it back, that we get a little bit more of um, uh, an even final there and not a defensive struggle that goes to Panabella is at nil-nil. But Roma very much will like it. That's just a B entering my room so if you hear some buzzing that's that much more exciting was the other game in seville uh atmosphere through the roof i found it very interesting everyone there was dressed in red and Seville playing in white um jersey matchup i do not like those you with jersey but i have to say the white and then you know the three color with the pink blue and white socks uh, it looked the part. I, I just would wish that this Juve jersey didn't have this pattern on the front. If, if this was a plain pink jer uh, jersey with some uh, blue somewhere, I think I would be fine with that. And that, that would actually be a great Juve look. The game, of course, it was all Sevilla. 
most of the time that controlled the game and Juventus, especially at the beginning, trying to soak up the pressure. But this was not a toothless Juventus that we saw in the first leg. This was also also Juventus that had their chances and uh, namely Moise Ken uh, hit the outside of the far post at one point. So that is happening as well. However, Sevilla created more chances and Chesney had uh, some brilliant saves in there. Sevilla in the first half probably should have had two penalties as well. I mean, the one with Fajoli potentially did not hit the hand, but the way he took it down, it didn't look right. It was more like a volleyball move. Uh, but what Cuadrado did then, just taking down the Sevilla player at the edge of the box, there was no, I don't even think he got the ball. I mean, I saw this so often, I wanted to see, did he get the hit? He went straight for the legs. It was on the line. Should have been a penalty and how uh, uh, Makkeli missed one. I really rate Makkeli as a great uh, referee. He had a horrible, horrific game. Uh, yes, yes, yes. They, this should have been a penalty for Sevilla. As much as I honestly would have liked you were to win this one, uh, because I'm tired of Sevilla, honestly. Uh, I think it's great that they go for the Europa League. It's not uh, that I hate Sevilla any, anyway, but... Uh, it is so they get into the quarterfinals and they probably should have been pulled out by United out of their misery. We, United should have had a much larger lead in that in that first, first leg and how they fought the back for itself. Then they deservedly beat United in, 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 in the end. But I think it, I, it just does not compute that Sevilla is still there, on, honestly. But credit by credit to Mendili Bar did amazing work, settled down, simplified Sevilla's playing style. And suddenly they are delivering, getting the results. Uh, the second half, it was more of the same. However, uh, there was a crucial uh, exchange when uh, Di Maria and Moise Ken came off and Kies and Vlahovic came on. And wait a minute. Vlahovic, the defenders are unsor un un unsorted. I think it was uh, Goodell and, and someone else. Totally unassorted ball falls to Vlahovic, who within a minute makes it 1-0. Lobs it nicely over the keeper as well. And at that point, I really thought that you was going to see this out because they were defending. Uh, Jesse was having a great game. Uh, they were defending really strong. They were always dangerous on the counter-attack. However, it was two other players that came, came, came on. Uh, Torres, that, that, that was the guy that Cuadrado fouled. Uh, Torres came off and uh, Susu came on before Vlahovic and Chiesa. And Lamela also had just come on for uh, Ocampos, and it's Lamela who uh, pl plays it over to Suso, who then takes a shot. Brilliant. I mean, uh, it looks when he takes it, it takes it looks like it it it, 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 it just doesn't look that it's so uh, hard hit, but it's a brilliantly hit shot. Even Chesney could not save that one. And you know, as a former Milan player, I always have liked Suso, although he became a little bit of a one-trick pony at the San Zero at one point. So it was great to see him do something. And then and the Siri also hit the crossbar late on. It was a game that was really both teams having chances. Yes, more impetus to go forward with Juventus. However, overall, I thought this was a gripping game in great ad at atmosphere. This was worthy of a Champions League semi-final. This was this. This was a Europa League classic. Absolutely. It goes to overtime and a Brian Hill cross is headed in by Lamela. And that was the straw that broke the camel's back in a way because I thought that Juventus now had a really time, really hard time from switching to defense to offense. And yes, they created, but they missed also badly. I mean, there was a Chiesa shot where I think a case in good form puts this on the uh, goal and probably goes in. Um, maybe the most notable scene that happened afterwards that Acuna gets booked for a yellow card and again Makeli did was not really aware. He's of course made aware by the most rotten player that there is, Leandro Paredes, who who knows every little dirty trick in the book, immediately points out Acuna actually had already a yellow, yellow card. Please send him off. I'm quite certain that Arconia would not have been sent off if Makali was aware of that. Yes, Juve tried to get an equalizer. It was not happening and Sevilla make it to another Europa League final. And in that final, I think both teams, Sevilla will play in their regular uh, get, get, get up. I would think even with black socks and then Roma will wear white socks with their all red kit. I think this will be a very pleasing matchup. As I said in the opener, it's a very interesting one because Sevilla has never lost a Europa League final. 
Jose Mourinho has never lost a European final. So one uh, series is break. Severe streak is a little, little bit longer, so a little bit more danger of breaking. In a way, I also think that there's a connection with... I'm, I'm not sure if Monchi is still at Sevilla, but you know he also used to be at Roma, so it's kind of the Monchi Dur uh, Dur uh, Dur Derby. I think the team's matching up quite nicely as well. And two huge fan bases of and two teams that definitely are not the top teams in their country, but have enormous fan bases in the country. So really, really cool one. I'm looking forward to that. It will be played in Budapest. And honestly, betting against Sevilla seems to be a lost cause. However, my model gives Roma a slight advantage which I think is down to the bad league form that Sevilla had. I think I will turn it around and maybe give even Sevilla a slight edge and it's mostly down to Roma's injuries. But we have two really, really interesting finals. And my question is, how many Italians will win the European Cup competitions? I have a feeling it will not be more than one. But I'm not sure if it will go to Roma or Fiorentina. I give Inter no chance. In any case, Please let me know what you thought about the happenings in the Europa and Europa Conf Conference League. I think it was a great evening. Unfortunately, I needed to get up early on Friday, so I was not too happy about the overtimes, but uh, the action more than made up for me not being all that pleased about that. I will talk to you soon with more. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!